I'm in the right place at the right time, right where I'm supposed to be. I'm in the right place at the right time, right where I'm supposed to be. Oh, my soul. My soul is welcome here I'm getting the message loud and clear My soul is welcome here You're in the right place at the right time Right where you're supposed to be You're in the right place at the right time you're right where you're supposed to be Oh, your soul is welcome here Your soul is welcome here You're getting the message loud and clear Your soul is welcome here Your soul is welcome here Our brother Jesus Christ is here and he's raising us to his consciousness that we too are one with the goodness, the presence, and the power that is that abundance of life that is creator, that is God. I invite you to join me in prayer. Mother, Father, God, we're grateful to be here today at this time when we're celebrating the founding of the United States of America Thank you, God, that we are all who are part of this nation filled with the courage, with the vision, and with the willingness and the honesty to look clearly at who we are, at what has been as what is, so that we may create what can be. Thank you, God, for the high aspirations and the high, truly spiritual principles upon which this country was founded. God, we open ourselves to forgiveness for the ways that there are such gaps between our behaviors sometimes and those principles. And we give thanks for the many ways that we indeed aspire to and do indeed manifest and express those principles. Give us strength, give us energy, give us the power, God, and we claim it for it lives within us to bring forth into expression equality, justice, respect, and abundance for all. We give thanks, God, that we do now embody and express those high principles. We give thanks that the light of God shines through every person who's a part of this nation, that we may shine that hope and that presence for all people. Thank you, God, for your presence in us, through us, and as us. Open us to new vision, to new courage, and to new expression on this very special weekend. And so it is. And we give thanks in the name and through the power of our brother and our way shower, Jesus the Christ, and the Christ that lives as us. Amen. Amen. 
Good morning, and welcome to Unity of Austin. I'm glad that you're here today. Thank you for joining us, and uh, we're glad that you are participating from your home or from your yard or from somewhere. Socially distancing, we know, keeping yourselves and in, in our whole community safe. And we're very glad that you're here. Here at Unity of Austin, we do live the Jesus Christ principles, and we are open to learning and growing every single day. We're grateful for this, uh, for the unity philosophy and for the ways that it supports us and informs our lives. We bless all people. And again, we're very, very glad that you're here today. And, uh, as, and again, it's a very special weekend as we are all celebrating. So glad you're here. Good morning, Unity of Austin and beyond. We're glad you've joined us today. I invite you to join us in singing as we sing about oneness. Healing and oneness. The first song is I Am One. I am one with everything around me. I let go and simply be. Moving forward with the understanding. Being one can set us free. Standing, being one can set us free. One with you, one with me, one with you, one with me. Hey. I am love with everything around me. I let go and simply be. Moving forward with the understanding, being love can set us free. I am love with everything around me. I let go and simply be. Moving forward with the understanding. Being love can set us free. Love with you. Love with me. Love with you. Love with me. Oh, yeah. I am peace with everything around me. I let simply be moving forward with the understanding only peace can set us free i am peace with everything around me i let go and simply be moving forward with the understanding only peace can set us free peace with you peace with me peace with you peace with me God is 
is peace. So I must be peaceful. I let the peace of God flow through. Thank you for that music. It's so beautiful, and it really speaks the truth. It's great to sing it. It just uplifts us. And so with that, let's affirm our blessing for all faiths. <clears throat> I invite you to join in and affirm this with me. Our God is love, our race is human, and our religion is oneness. That's the truth. And so I've just got a few announcements for you. First of all, I'd really like to thank... <clears throat> Trevor, who is our AV technician here, we appreciate him very much. He gets us going, and very much too appreciate uh, you, Eric, and Sharon, soul and sound, sound and soul, <laughs> however. And uh, also very much appreciate our greeters, uh, Gayla and Marlo, who are out there typing away, I know, greeting you all. And I want to thank, too, our board. We had a great uh, annual meeting last Sunday. And uh, thank Stephen Fisher, who served as on the board for his two terms back-to-back -back and has now get to retired for a little while anyway and has served as our board president. So I want to thank him very much and congratulate Gayla Harris for coming back on the board and, and also Catherine Samick for coming back on the board. So we appreciate them very much and appreciate all the leaders in our church, all of you who are uh, meeting with your groups and your classes and uh, it's, it's great. So thanks for all of us for being community. The church is open, the buildings are closed, and I know too that we're all holding our Austin community in prayer, seeing health and well-being, knowing that the wholeness, the, the life and the love, the, the health that is God is greater than uh, the appearance of illness, and we know that at the level of fact that we are experiencing an uptick in uh, the virus, and so we acknowledge the facts and we hold to the truth and see the healing for all those who are experiencing that, those in hospital, uh, those certainly that are on ventilators, the family and friends of all those, those who are ill uh, at home. We see health and well-being, and we see that in our community. We see everybody stepping up, too, and practicing responsible behaviors so that we manifest that well-being. So thank you for holding our community in prayer, and also all of our leaders, the decision makers, who are, are can use our Help our prayers and knowing that they're filled with energy and strength and the wisdom to continue to make good decisions for all of us that help us all. So thank you for keeping that in your prayers and holding to the truth. And so let's see, you get the announcements every week in, our, in the email. So if you don't get Shine the Light, let us know. Just go on the website, unitychurchaustin.org, and through the contact form and let us know, and we'll put you on the email list. There's always lots of good information and inspiration in the weekly Shine the Light. Um, thank you for being here with us today. And, you know, you just go on Facebook Live. You just click on the link in the... Uh, shine the light or you just go on Facebook what you don't have to have an account on Facebook and you can participate with us so thank you and thank you to Facebook for making this available um, for all of the faith communities and all the other many good things that happen that we're able to access this at no cost so I'm grateful for that and thank them very much for that um, let's see pretty much um, I don't think we have a lot of new announcements. I just want to bring your attention to that we do have a fairly new uh, e-newsletter now for children called The Spark, and it's really good. It's, it's short, but it's got the teachers each week. The YFM teachers are making a video of the lesson, the children's lesson. It lasts maybe 10, to at the most, 15 minutes. It's wonderful. It's warm. The teachers are reaching out. You can access that there or also on our Facebook page and has a fun activity for children and also uh, other the lesson for the week, the whole PDF of that, as well as always a section for parents so, and grandparents. So uh, if you don't get the spark, again, let us know. And whether you've got children or not, I think you'll enjoy it. I love uh, helping to create it. Uh, I think I wish that that's what I'd had when I was a kid. So it's a lot of fun. Um, 
know too that you can uh, continue. Thank you for your continuing financial support of your spiritual community here, Unity of Austin. You can give through the website. Just go on unitychurchaustin.org and there's a big button that says donate or something like that. And uh, you just click that or, or you can go to the, you know, to contribute page or what you'll find it it's easy to find anyway you can give through that portal it's secure and safe with your you can use you know a card uh, there or you can mail in a check or you can set up an automatic deposit uh, with your bank or an automatic payment with your bank and it's wonderful so thank you you are participating and in, in uh, supporting your spiritual community so that is wonderful and much appreciated and I know as you're practicing your uh, practice of spiritual giving you too are blessed be aware that, too, that in this uh, first Sunday of July, the blessing slip now is in the Shine the Light. So uh, we used to have that, you know, as a paper uh, that you could get on the first Sunday, but that's in there, and it's inviting you to think about how you're going to live the affirmation for the month. And uh, I hope you'll fill that out, and you can uh, just keep it for yourself, or you can send it in, again, through the link there, which is the Contact Us form. Know that we are here for you, that we are praying with you. Our prayer team is praying with our whole congregation, reaching out to you as individuals as well. If you would like a contact from a prayer team member, let us know, and we'll make sure that you get on the list. Also, you can leave a message uh, at my extension, which is the, the church phone number, and my extension is 303. Um, or you can... Uh, make a prayer request through the prayer request form on the website. And we are praying with you and want you to know that. And, um, and uh, holding us all in prayer. And it's just a wonderful thing. Also, as we are celebrating the birth of, of the United States of America this weekend, we're also celebrating, as this first Sunday in July, the July birthdays for all of you. So we're going to sing happy birthday to all the July birthdays. Happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you, happy birthday dear friend, happy birthday to you, God is blessing you now, God is blessing you now, God is blessing you, you are wonderful. Happy birthday. And so with that, I'll invite you to meet and greet whomever you may be with or put it in the comment box there and meet and greet the people that are online. Or if you're there with yourself, meet and greet yourself or your pets or whoever you're with. Meet and greet. you to join in singing hymn number 227 new age vision mine eyes have seen the coming of the age that is to be but within the invitation i shall know that i am free for the age is rich in promise and my soul has eyes to see god's truth sing of love's great triumph in this time of jubilee god's truth is marching seen the nation 
nations brought until there is no tribe or clan. And the warlords all have vanished in the love of man for man. God's truth is marching on. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Glory, glory, hallelujah. So let's share the daily word for today. And we're sharing this with people all around the world. And we're participating in the consciousness of this daily word, which has been published by Unity for over 100 years. We're participating in it, enjoying the, the buildup of this Christ consciousness, and also we're contributing to it. So thank you for being part of the daily word. And the word for today, Sunday, July the 5th, 2020, is comfort. Christ in me is my comfort. And I invite you to join in with me and affirm that two times. Comfort. Christ in me is my comfort. Christ in me is my comfort. Experiences that move me out of my comfort zone are part of life. The first day at a new school, starting or leaving a job, a new phase in a relationship, retiring from a career, the passing of a loved one. Any change can evoke discomfort, even grief. I grieve when I think of change as loss, loss of security, loss of my place in my community, or loss of love. The Christ, the divine presence of life, love, <clears throat> and wisdom within me is my constant source of comfort through all of life's changes. I find assurance that although its physical expressions may change, life can never end. I know oneness and love with all who've been dear to me. Recognizing my divine nature, I know that there is no loss, no change or circumstance that can limit me, and I am comforted. Our scripture today is from Psalm 71, verse 21. You will increase my honor and comfort me once again. Comfort. Christ in me is my comfort. And let's now prepare for meditation. Let us find peace. Let's now enter into this time of prayer and meditation. I invite you to be aware of your breath as it comes in and goes out, allowing your breath to relax your mind and allowing the thoughts to move to the edges of your awareness. If it's helpful for you to close your eyes, I invite you to do that if that's uh, supportive of you going within. And as your mind relaxes, allow your body temple to relax. 
feeling relaxation from the crown of your head, relaxing your face and neck and shoulders and arms and hands, and feeling relaxation as it moves all the way through the trunk of your body, through your legs and feet. And as your body relaxes, be aware of your heart beating in that rhythm that's your rhythm. As your heart circulates the physical nourishment around your body, know that your heart is also circulating your Christ power of love. And that love is expanding and growing and harmonizing and healing you and reaching out and touching others, reminding them that they too are love. Share this prayer with me now. The Christ is my comfort. Whatever there may be in my life right now that is disturbing me, if I feel fearful, or if I'm feeling a lack or a loss, I know that that's something that occurs on the human level. And yet I allow myself to move into a deeper awareness. An awareness of the comfort and the love that is God. And so I feel that comfort. I feel that love. I feel that peace. Love is permeating my thoughts, radiating through my body, touching my mind and my emotions. I know that I am one with the love and the comfort of the Christ my indwelling experience of God. As I'm knowing this for myself, I'm knowing this for all people, that everyone is experiencing that oneness, that truth of who they are. And so we now let go into the quiet. Mother, Father, God, we give thanks for we feel the wholeness of your presence. We feel the wholeness of your spirit. We let go into that. We let that be our reality, for it is reality. We're grateful for our brother Jesus Christ, knowing that he is right here, showing us the way, opening up our own hearts and minds to the deep truth of our oneness with all people, with all of life, with you, God. And so it is. Amen. And gently and easily now, we begin to move into a waking awareness as we sing together the truth of the presence of God in our lives and in our world, our Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in temptation 
but deliver us from so much. That was beautiful. Thank you. Thanks, Sharon. Thank you, Eric. Ooh, just take a minute and let that sink in. All right, let's take a moment and open ourselves to that inner Christ. <clears throat> Thank you, God. We know that the Christ within us is the true teacher, and so we hear what you have to tell us. Amen. Amen. So again, uh, 
I, we are celebrating this founding of the United States of America this weekend, and I trust that you've had a safe and celebratory weekend, although I know that it's been different for all of us. So it's an opportunity, just as we were reading in the, in the Daily Word and as we're thinking about ourselves and our country and our community on this weekend, when things are different, it's an opportunity to see ourselves differently, to see things in a new way. And so I know that we are all taking that opportunity, for that's how we grow. When we see things in, as facts as they are and when we delve deeper and learn, live into that truth, we find that we are transformed. So that's our opportunity uh, in this time, is to transform our consciousness. So with that, this month of July here, we're going to be focusing on the foundational principles of unity. We have five foundational principles. They're not dogma, they're not doctrine. They're simply summations, very good summations, of, what, of the unity philosophy. And so today we're going to be starting with that one that is the very foundation of all these principles. And that is that there's only one presence and one power in the universe and in my life. God the good, omnipotent. And so I invite you to affirm that with me now three times and to engage your energy system however you do that. You can make some hand motions or you can uh, stand up and shout or you can blink your eyes or wiggle your toe, whatever it is that gets you engaged. So let's affirm this together. There is only, only one, one presence, presence and, and one power in the, the universe, universe and in, in my, my life. life. God the good, omnipotent. There is only one presence and one power in the universe. God the good, omnipotent. Did I miss a word? I missed a word. In the universe and my life. God the good, omnipotent. Let's affirm it the third time. I'll try to get all the words this time. Okay. There is only one presence and one power in the universe and in my life. God the good, good omnipotent. omnipotent. Amen. 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 All right, and that's a powerful one. So we're going to take a look at that today. So you've heard this joke, I know you have, but I love it. It's the joke about the, the Zen monk who was in New York City, and he went up to the hot dog vendor there who had his hot dog cart uh, on the sidewalk there in New York City, and he, the monk comes up and he says, <clears throat> you know, I, I want a hot dog. And the vendor says, well, what do you want? on it. You know, I've got relish, I got mustard, I've got hot mustard, I've got hot sauce, I've got all kind of things. What kind of, what all do you want on this hot dog? And you know what the Zen monk said, right? He said, make me one with everything. <laughs> and the truth is, thank you, thank you, thank you. The truth is, of course, that we're already one with everything. We know that, and that Zen monk knows that too, that we're one with everything. And we're one with ourselves, we're one with the universal life force, and we're one with all, therefore, we're one with all people uh, and situations. And so uh, that's, the, that's really the important thing for us to know as human beings, that we are one with everything. And uh, we'll talk today about what's challenging for us about that as humans and what the gift is when we do realize that oneness, when we live in that. Um, because we look around, you know, as human beings, and we think, well, how could that be that we're one with everything? Obviously, if you look at creation, there's a lot of different things in creation. You know, there's trees, there's mountains, there's cars, there's all kind of stuff that's a part of creation. And we look around at other human beings, and we think, well, you know, we have different cultures. We, we have different languages. We have different faiths. All of this, how can it be that we are one? And um, on the surface, you know, we are all different. We're different expressions. But in the depths, we are one. So I'm going to share this story with you. This is a, a story from the Hindu scriptures, from the Hindu uh, Vedas. It's a story about a, a father and son and a conversation they had. The, uh, when the son was born, the parents were excited, and they planned to send their son away to be well-educated. So when he was 12 years old, they sent him away to some of the finest teachers in their uh, country, some of the finest uh, teachers, the Hindu teachers, and they sent him away for 12 years. So he studied with those teachers from the time that he was 12 till the time that he was 24 years old. And when he was uh, completed his studies, he came back home. And he came back home, of course, very full of himself and very arrogant. And he basically said to his father, he says, now I know everything, so um, I'm good. Well, the father, uh, being much wiser than that, said, oh, really? 
do you? Okay. He says, well, did those teachers of yours, he said, did they teach you um, how to bear the unbearable, how to perceive the unperceivable, how to know the unknowable? Well, this sort of stumped the son, and he, he was disconcerted, and he said, well, no. He said, they didn't tell me that. He said, something must have been wrong because I thought they knew everything, and I thought they taught me everything, but they didn't teach me that. So he, the son had enough humility to say, so, Father, would you teach me to bear the unbearable, to know the unknowable, to perceive the unperceivable? And the father says, son, go out and um, look at this uh, great tree here, the Nyagrota tree. And he says, bring me the seed pod from the Nyagrota tree. So the son did that. And the father says, break it open. Break open that seed pod. And he says to the son, what do you see? And the son says, well, I see a lot of seeds in there. So the father says, well, take one of the seeds and break that open. So the son did that. And the father said, what do you see in there? And he says, I see nothing. And the father says, ah. He says, that nothingness that you see there, he says, that is the very essence. That is the very substance out of which everything that is the great Nyagrota tree comes now you know how to bear the unbearable, how to perceive the unperceivable, and how to know the unknowable. Because thou art that, son, thou art that, which cannot be seen, which cannot be perceived. But that is the essence, that is the divine spiritual substance out of which everything comes. Thou art that. That's the great spiritual truth that, um, that guides us. That's the great spiritual truth that is embodied in the unity statement. There's only one presence and only one power in the universe and in my life. God the good omnipotent. Because, friends, we, you know, at times like we are experiencing here in our country, uh, when there is so much in the outer, so much in the manifest world, that it's crystal clear that we have no control over it. We can't stop it just by the sheer force of human will. We cannot control other people. We cannot control a virus, not in the world of fact. The opportunity in that is to come to a deeper understanding, to come to a deeper wisdom, and to really realize, to really have that experience that thou art that, that ourselves, everything that is created comes from that unseen world, comes from that divine substance. And when we are willing and, and open to experiencing ourselves that way and experiencing life as deeper than what is manifest, then we are aligned with the power of the universe. We are aligned with creativity. We're aligned with wisdom. We're aligned with self-responsibility. We're aligned with peace. We're aligned with love. Just like that first song we sang today, I'm one with everything around me. Love is, love is what uh, is the solution. Peace is what is the solution. So when we align with that deeper reality, that's from the place from which we create solutions. That's the place from which uh, we create uh, true justice, that we create true equality with all people, that we create true abundance, that we create true well-being, because we are dipping down into the well of life itself, and from that comes wisdom, from that comes the ability to make choices that work, choices that are divine solutions, choices that bring forth the good. That's what we're called to do. It's, it's true all the time. It's a fact all the time that we don't have conscious, we don't have control over things in the outer, but a lot of times we don't notice. We kind of go along. We think, well, I'm good. You know, like the sun did, I know it all. I'm good. And then the, the, the opportunity comes when we realize when things get so heavy that we're like, oh, I get it. I can't control it, but yet I can create solutions if I'm willing to understand that depth who I am. The opportunity, you know, there's a lot of, um, there's a, a wonderful analogy that's often uh, spoken of in indigenous cultures, that life is like a river, spoken of in a lot of cultures. Life is like a river and it's flowing fast, but if you're going to hang on to the bank, hang on to, like that sun and think, I know it all, I'm good, you know, and if that river is flowing fast, it's going to kind of beat you around there on the rocks as you're clinging to that bank and you're not going to get anywhere. 
So the opportunity for times like this, the opportunity uh, is to let go into that river of life and allow it to carry us. Let go of the bank. Let go, just like in the daily word today, stuff happens, you know, and we do lose things in the outer but yet when we let go of that bank, when we let go of thinking I've got to hang on to how it was, when it's already changed, when it's already gone, that manifestation is gone, and allow ourselves to flow into that river of life, then we are in the flow, then we are affirming life, then we are going forward, and we will not get beat up, we will be in the flow. That's the opportunity, that's what it is, to know that there's one presence and one power. You know, in... Um, in Unity, Eric Butterworth, the great Unity minister and what a wonderful writer, uh, said this. He said, Unity is more concerned with finding a consciousness of oneness with God and then seeking to express God through thought, word, and act. So in Unity, we're not interested in, in imposing a belief system or having a dogma or having a doctrine. We're interested in having that experience of the presence of God. And then, and not just having it as a mystical experience, that's wonderful. And yet, that has to be what informs how we think, how we act, what we say. Um, Charles Fillmore talked, um, uh, the co-founder of Unity back in the 1800s with his wife Myrtle Fillmore, was real clear that God is not a person. God's not like a big giant person out there that we have to somehow appeal to. But God is the very essence of life itself. And, and he has a famous passage, which actually he's echoing uh, what Emily Cady, another uh, great light uh, at the beginning of our unity movement in her book, Lessons in Truth. He's echoing what Emily Cady wrote when he says, uh, he, he, Charles Fillmore wrote, God is not loving, God is love. God is not intelligent, God is intelligence. God is not health, God is, he didn't really say this, but God is wholeness. God is well-being. He didn't use those terms, but he certainly ascribed to that. God is not abundant. God is abundance. And so it's, a, it's an important shift. It's a shift from uh, seeing God as a condition out there to, and, a, and some kind of an entity to understanding God as the very essence of all things. And that's an important and essential shift. That's what allows us to live in wholeness. That's what allows us to embrace all people. That's what allows us to bear all situations and not only to bear them, but to grow through them, to come up and express and create divine solutions. Meister Eckhart, who was a medieval uh, Christian mystic, said it this way. He says, the more God is in all things, the more God is outside of them. And the more God uh, is within, the more God is without. So that's saying that paradox, spirituality is always paradoxical. It's, it's affirming that paradox that we live, move, and have our being in God. That's from the Apostle Paul in the book of Acts, and he's quoting the Greek philosophers. So it is in God that we live, move, and have our being. There's only one presence and only one power. One thing that's important for us to understand as human beings is what is the relationship between the inner and the outer? What's the relationship between this essence that that's God, and this variety of all that we see in the created world. And so one analogy that has been used that's very common, um, and it's a, it's a wonderful analogy, is the universal symbol of the wheel. And you know, if you think about a wheel, like a wagon wheel, you know at the very core of that wheel there is the hub, that circle in, in the very middle of it. And that hub literally is the literally is the center of that wheel and it's absolutely essential because from the center of that wheel or, or if you could think of it as a bicycle wheel from the center of that wheel come the spokes and the spokes are essential because we know that what goes on the outside of those spokes is the rim of the wheel and you have to have the rim of the wheel in order to be able to roll so if we think of that, if, as we think of the hub of the wheel as that essence that is God, and that, that which is that which is unseen and unexperienced at the, sense, at the level of senses, 
and we think of the spokes as the beginning of the manifestation, the beginning of the expression of what's happening in the outside world. And uh, we see that rim is what allows us to move through this human experience. We're rolling through life. We're going through life, having experiences. Then we start to understand something about the connection between the essence and the manifestation. The dilemma that we have as human beings until we pay attention to our inner life, until we are willing to awaken to that essence, to that uh, which is unseen, is that we look out the rim of the wheel and we think that's it, you know? We think that's all that's going on. We look outside and we think I'm different from other people and, and that's the foundation, frankly, of how we are cruel to each other. We think, well, that person is different than me. I guess I better get mine before they get it. You know, and um, and that's the the place where we get into all of the conflict and all of the upset that we have as human beings. But um, it's also, if you think about religion, um, it's the very hub of the wheel. If you think about that as the essence of religion, that's where all mystics kind of dwell. That the ones that have the direct experience of God, and we can all have that. We're all uh, nor natural mystics. Some people take advantage of it. And some people don't. Some people allow themselves to experience it, and, and others of us are still learning. But the the mystics are all they dwell at the center of the wheel, or they're very aware of it. And it doesn't matter what faith walk they're in, what, you know, they, they are one. They don't care what people call God or, you know, what their sacred scriptures are, or whatever, because they get it, that it's all God. Where the quarrels come is at the, the, the rim of the wheel. The people, because the spokes, you know, they go out and they fan out. And so the people that don't, aren't aware of the center of the wheel, they're living out there kind of just on the rim and they think that's all there is. That's where the culture wars come from. That's the ridiculous culture wars and people fighting over whose who's God is the right God and all that business, you know, amen. and the rules. Yeah, I got an amen over there. All right. And all the, that's where the culture wars come from. It's ridiculous. But when you start looking into the, the center of that wheel, that all just dissolves. And not only do you not worry about where everybody, what everybody thinks or whatever their you know, religion is or whatever, you also gain this, the, most essential, uh, the most essential skill, I guess, or the most essential consciousness, which is to love the people that are fussing on the edge of the wheel, the ones that really think that's all there is. And they're fussing with everybody. When you're looking toward the center of the wheel and when you're living there, or at least aware of it, you're not even upset about them. And that's a discipline, but that's what we're called to do, is we get it that God's in them just as God is in us, and we can bless them and affirm them and not hate them and not argue with them. For goodness, don't, don't argue with them on Facebook. Okay, that is, <laughs> that is a no win. All right, just love them and say to them, you might be right, and move on. You know, and love them and bless them and pray and know that their highest good is coming too. Um, just and pray for them again, not that God change them. No. Pray, thank you, God, that they too are feeling love, that they too are feeling abundance, that they too are experience well, experiencing well being. When we're doing that, even if it's hard sometimes, that means that we're looking toward the center of the wheel. Um, you may have heard of the monk, uh, uh, the Trappist monk he was, Thomas Merton, who has written so many good books, The, the Seven Story Mountain and so forth. He, he passed away quite a while ago, but he was, a, he was a real mystic, and he came to it, you know, from some hard knocks. His, his life wasn't easy, and he was no angel, but he came to, to that place um, where I think that uh, he really, he got it, you know. He was a mystic. He understood, and he became a monk. And I'll just say this for, the, for hard knocks. A lot of times, that's the gift of hard knocks. That's the gift of, of uh, you know, uh, having a life that's challenging. If it brings you to your knees, if it brings you to look toward the center of the wheel, it has accomplished its purpose. That's the point, is to get it, that you can't control what's going on out there. And when you get that, then you're willing to let go and, and let God, you're willing to live at the center of that wheel. And that's what we need today. That's what we need. We need people who are willing to be true elders in, in that sense. Um, as I th think it's an African proverb that says, just because a person has white hair, it doesn't mean they're an elder. 
when an elder can be of any age. An elder is somebody that's let go and let God, that's let go of the banks of that river, that has, is looking, that's, that's not fussing around out there on the edge of the wheel, but a, a true elder is someone that's looking toward the center of that wheel and is understanding that God is in all of us, one presence, one power. And friends, our world needs that today, so I invite all of us to keep on aspiring and keep on doing the work to be that elderhood, to be that elder, and to, to have that wisdom from the divine, not because we're so smart, we may be smart, that's all right, but this is a deeper kind of wisdom. This is that which knows that which is um, ineffable, that which knows the source of all being, and that we can share that and bring that into the manifest world, bring that understanding. Okay, so back to Thomas Merton. I took a little dog leg there. All right, so Thomas Merton, um, again, was a Christian mystic, and he also, after he became a Trappist monk, he also began uh, to study uh, Buddhism, and he loved it. And what uh, the Dalai Lama uh, spoke of him, and he said, you know, Thomas Merton understood that you can study many different uh, religions. You can understand and walk many, you can love and embrace many different paths and still walk your own path. You know, let the path that is your particular path to the hub of that wheel um, into the ineffable, let that be your path. And it doesn't mean that you're excluding other paths. Exclusion comes from the rim of the wheel. That's when you say, you know, no, you, I can't look at yours because I have to stick to mine. No, inclusion comes at the center of the wheel, at the hub, when we are living from that place. And then we can walk our own path. We may be on our own spoke, but yet we can look and see the truth um, in all paths. That's how our unity movement was founded. Charles and Myrtle Fillmore... Um, had uh, experiences of God. They had studied with other people. There's a long tradition, if you start looking back at our unity history, um, of how we kind of came to this understanding in our modern times of uh, the Jesus Christ walk as a mystical path. The Fillmores didn't invent this, and they were cr crystal clear about that. They said, we are not saying we've got anything special or that we're doing anything new. They, were, they said that very overtly and wrote it. They said that we are uh, taking the truth out of uh, that we find in all religions and, and bringing it um, into this understanding of the Jesus Christ walk. They were crystal clear about that. Um, they respected all paths, and they walked the Jesus Christ path. That's why it matters to walk a path, and it doesn't mean that you have to just pick one or the other, but you have to have a path because it is through walking a path, the one that you are called to, that you will uh, do the disciplines of that, that you will follow it into the depths. If you just go to the spiritual buffet um, without picking a path, the danger in that is that you will just pick and choose and that you won't ever go into the depths. You may go to the buffet for a while to see what you like to eat. That's kind of the gift of buffets, right? You don't like everything that's on the buffet. It doesn't speak to you. But at some point, you have to find, and it really comes from within. It's not really out from outside. You have to hear from within. What is my path? Who are my teachers, my inner teachers, and who do I listen to in the outer that are, quote, my elders, that I think have some wisdom, not to dominate me, but that can share with me, that I can learn from, that can call me into walking my path. You know, that's, um, Emily Cady wrote that, and I quoted her in my heart notes uh, this week that I put in the um, that I put in the shine the light. She said, sooner or later, everybody's got to, every soul has to basically sit down with, with, their own, with their own God. And you've got to come to grips with that. Nobody can walk it for you. You've got to come to it yourself. And we can do that. That's the gift. That's the good news, is that it is within us to know just what that uh, son in the Hindu uh, story learned that there is that thou art that that I am that which is ineffable and I want to share with you this what Jesus had to say about that this is um, from the gospel of Luke chapter 10 and the setup for this or where this uh, comes from uh, where this passage is derived from is basically from uh, the Jewish Shema and the and the the Jewish Shema is the foundation of Judaism, and it's basically, hero Israel, the Lord God is one. 
And that does not mean, and nor does Judaism understand it as meaning, that there's this belief out there of some kind of an autocrat. That's not it. It's, it's this is one presence, one power. There is that which is inevitable, ineffable. God is one. And out of all of that comes creation. So that's, the, although it's not right said here, that's the uh, understanding, that's the wisdom out of which this passage comes that I'm going to share with you. So this is Luke 10, starting with verse 25. So just then a lawyer stood up to test Jesus. Teacher, he said, what must I do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus said to him, what's written in the law? What do you read there? And Jesus was basically saying, well, what's the principle? you telling me you're smart? So, okay, great. So what is the principle? What's in there? You know what's in there. Jesus was pushing his buttons, right? Tell him to come on, you know, think. Tap into your wisdom. What's the principle? And so the lawyers answered, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, and with all your mind. There's more. So he was right. And basically, he, again, that stems out of the Shema. That stems out of the idea that there is only one presence and one power. Hear, O Israel, the Lord God is one. And so, of course, if there's that one, you better love it with everything you are being because you're loving yourself. You're loving that which is the source of creation. And then a passage, of course, goes on, and it says, and your neighbor as yourself. That's the part where we're getting it. Oh, oh. Everybody comes from that same divine substance. Everybody's from there. And so not only do I have to love God, my own essence, I have to love my neighbor because that same essence is in them. I have to love myself because that essence is in me. Oh, oh, there's no way out of this, friends. I'm glad there's no way out of it. It's wonderful. That's great because we have to... Get in touch. We have to make that conscious connection with that oneness. And then Jesus goes on and he said to him, you've given the right answer. Do this and you'll live. You've given the right answer. Do this and you'll live. Why does it matter that we know there's only one presence and one power in the universe and in our lives? It matters because... It lets us connect with ourselves. It lets us connect with our earth creation. It lets us connect with other people in respectful ways. We don't have to save them or colonize them and try to make them think something or believe something. It creates bridges with people. Even the people out there on the spoke of the wheel having culture wars. So what? They're our sisters and brothers too. We can love them and let them, they're doing their thing and affirm the goodness of God in them. It can give us a stable center, just like we read in the Daily Word, to deal with life, to come from that place, know that whatever's shifting on the outer, that we're in that, grounded in that one presence and one power. And, and the fruition of all of that, the culmination of all of that, is that it helps us to create the world that we all want that world of justice, that world of peace, that world of equality, that world where we get it, that we all belong. Let's pray. Mother, Father, God, thank you so much for this truth. Thank you so much. Help us live it, and so it is. We affirm this through the power of the loving, living Christ. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Reverend. Amen. You're welcome. Fed your flock exceptionally well today. The comments were just <laughs> lit. Like uh, Stephen said, thank you for clarifying Unity's uh, teaching on the essence of God. Yeah. And, um, you know, Unity's grand principle of oneness, it's more than ever needed because, you know, people are seeking to divide us even as we speak. So thank you for that. And now it's time to celebrate our abundance. So I invite you to join us in singing our abundance song. God is my supply. God is my supply. I'm abundant indeed. God fills my every need, the overflowing source in my life. 
I have more than enough I always have more than enough God fills my cup With faith, love, and trust That I always have more than enough God is my supply God is my supply I'm abundant indeed God fills my every need The overflowing source in my life All right And so I invite you to hold your abundance In whatever form it may be right now You may just feel that Feel that energy of that divine source Coming through you, in you, as you Just feel that and let that overflow and, and just energize you and feel that your connection with the flow of life. As you give, you receive. As you receive, you give. Because you're open, you're channels, you're participating. And so with that, let's affirm our offering blessing. Divine love through me blesses and multiplies all that I am, all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. Thank you, Father, Mother, God. If I had a hammer, I'd hammer in the morning. I'd hammer in the evening all over this land. I'd hammer out danger. I'd hammer out warning I'd hammer out love Between my brothers and my sisters All over this land If I had a bell I'd ring it in the morning I'd ring it in the evening All over this land I'd ring out danger I'd ring out a warning I'd ring out love between my brothers and my sisters all over this land. If I had a song, I'd sing it in the morning. I'd sing it in the evening all over this world. I'd sing out danger. I'd sing out warning. Brothers and my sisters all over this land. If I got a hammer and I got a bell and I got a song to sing all over this land, it's a hammer of justice, it's a bell of freedom, it's a song about love between my brothers and my sisters. All over this land It's a hammer of justice It's a bell of freedom It's a song about love Between my brothers and my sisters All over this land And so with that, let's bless our offering and bless our prayers. Thank you, Father, Mother, God, for the flow of abundance. We are in the flow. And we bless all the prayers that have come <clears throat> through our church this week. And we can imagine the light in that beautiful prayer bowl under our prayer angel and all those that are in our prayer box symbolically. And all those that come through this week in so many different ways. And we know, God, that you are that well-being. You are that abundance. You are that life and light bringing forth the good and the peace of mind and the well-being and everything. And for this, we are so grateful. And so it is. Amen. 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 Let's bless our children. Here you go. Children, we, we love, love you. you. We, we bless, bless you. you. We appreciate you. you. And, and we, we behold, behold the Christ, Christ in you. And now let's close our service again, knowing that you're all going forward, having a good week filled with the awareness of the presence of God in you, in all people, in all situations, and firming that and bringing it forth. So let's um, sing our peace song and uh, then 
close, I'll just have to say this. I'll make a little aside here. Last night I did watch the uh, PBS special for the 40th, I think it was the 40th anniversary of the Capitol um, concert at, and the fireworks and so forth. I just enjoyed it so much. And in the background at one piece, I, they were playing the peace song. I thought, ah, that was very cool. So let's sing the peace song and then we'll close with our prayer for protection. The, are we gonna sing? Don't we sing first? Yeah. I can't remember. Let there be peace on earth And let it begin with me Let there be peace on earth A peace that was meant surrounds us, the love of God enfolds us, the power of God protects us, and the presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, God is, and all is well. Amen. Have a blessed week. i